Welcome back. So let's talk about the next four things you should do or know. Now, I think it's crucial that you need to discuss with your doctor your occupation and the specific problems that you're having during your occupation. So go back to that definition of occupation in the policy. How is it defined? Is it how you do your duties for your employer or how those duties are done in the national economy or done pursuant to a book called the Dictionary of Occupational Titles? You need to make sure that you know that definition so that you can write out what it is your occupational duties are and what you're having problems doing or you can't do at all because ultimately your doctor is going to be involved in filling out those forms. If they don't know what your occupation is, it will be hard for them to answer questions about whether you have restrictions, limitations that prevent you from doing those duties. So number six, what do your medical records actually say about your disabling condition or your inability to do your own occupation? Do you need to clean up your medical records? Now, I've seen times where medical records report that the patient says they're fine or they're not having any difficulty or don't comment at all about any problems. Either way, we've got to clean up that mess and we've got to make sure that your records reflect a discussion about your disabling medical condition and the problems you're having doing your occupational duties. Okay, now what are the last two things you need to know or do? Well, I think that you need to understand whether your employer provides what's called collateral benefits. What's that? Well, you might have a life insurance policy, a group in health policy, or pension contributions. Do they continue so long as you remain disabled under the company's short and long-term disability plan or policy? Now, if not, you want to make sure uh, that you've got alternative plans for coverage. I think that applying for short and long-term disability benefits is a way to maximize not only your money benefits, but under the terms of your um, your employer's uh, manual, policy manual, is probably the great way and the only way to maintain important benefits such as life and health benefits. Because unless you can pay that premium on your own, you may very well lose those benefits while you're on short-term disability benefits. Number eight, if your claim is denied, and sometimes short-term disability claims are denied, what's the time frame in which you have to file an appeal so that you don't lose not only your short-term disability benefits, but your group health, life, or pension benefits? Now, don't forget that a written appeal of a claim denial generally has to be filed within 180 days of the denial and that the appeal is the trial of your ERISA claim. So you don't want to monkey around with a claim denial, do you? So in summary, the eight things that I think you need to do before you stop work and apply for your short-term disability benefits is to first determine if you even have short or long-term disability coverage. Two, get a copy of the summary plan description for both the short-term and long-term disability coverage and a copy of each plan or policy. Read it cover to cover and outline the STD policy or uh, plan so you know the terms that are uh, relevant in your claim. You need to know what you need to prove before you stop working because it can be too late to develop that proof if you don't know what it is you have to prove. Next, number four, does your doctor support your claim and are they willing to fill out forms? Five, tell your doctor about your occupational duties and the specific problems you're having performing your occupational duties. What does your medical record say about your disabling medical condition and your inability to do your own occupation? And does your employer provide collateral benefits that you uh, want to maintain and, and have to submit proof of your receipt of short-term disability benefits to continue to get those collateral benefits. And if your claim's denied, do you know the time frame in which an appeal has to be filed so that you don't lose not only your short-term disability benefits, but your group health life and pension benefits. In the next segment, we're gonna do some myth busting. So what's the myth we're gonna talk about? It's if your employer tells the disability carrier that you're disabled, you've won your own occupation claim. Stay tuned. Are you a professional with questions about your individual disability policy? You need the Disability Insurance Claim Survival Guide for Professionals. This book gives you a comprehensive understanding of your disability policy, 
with tips and to-dos regarding your disability application that will assist you in submitting a winning disability application. This is one you won't want to miss. For the next 24 hours, we are giving away free copies of the Disability Insurance Claim Survival Guide for Professionals. Order yours today at disabilityclaimsforprofessionals.com.